Hi, I'm Andy Burke from the Reno Fly Shop. Today we're going to tie the Hunchback and Frequens or HBI nymph. I came up with this fly about 20 years ago on Fall River in Northern California, a very demanding Spring Creek. And since that time it's become a very, very popular fly throughout the West. I've got friends in Europe who fish them all the time. I think if you add these to your box you'll be really pleasantly surprised with the results when you try them on the stream. And if you're already a HBI addict or user, Follow me and I'll show you how to tie one exactly the way I tie it. This is a TMC 2487. I'm tying a big one. I'm tying a size 10 so we can see it on the video here. The normal sizes I tie this fly in are size 12 through size 22. On the size 20s and 22s, I usually don't tie in the legs. Worth noting. We're going to take a little 15 thousandths lead wire and we're going to put about 8 turns right in the thorax area. This is a fly we don't want to weight too heavily. I tie beadhead versions of it, but this is the original and still the one I probably fish more than any, any other single nymph other than bottom rollers. The thread color on this fly is very important. This is Danville number no. 7 orange. It's pre-waxed 6 aught nylon. It glows through the fly when the fly is complete. I also use it for the ribbing material so we don't have a harsh glaring metallic rib on the fly. Start the thread right in the lead wire. After we've given the hook shank a little coat of Dave's Flex Cement, give the lead a little coat too just so it stays together there. The key ingredients for the HBI Nymph are the HBI Dubbing Blend, that's available at renoflyshop.com, wood duck, which you use for the tail and legs of the fly. For the wing case, we're just going to use regular old model turkey feather. One of the old favorite wing case materials. Works great. The thread color is absolutely critical for this fly. Use Danville 6 aught pre wax thread in the number 7 orange color. I've been using the same color thread on this fly for 20 years. I've tried a bunch of different, uh, different types. This is the one that works the best. Okay, so when we've, we've got our thread started, normally you'd clip off this tag end. Don't do that on this fly. We're going to use that for our ribbing. So just wrap back over the rib material. I'm just holding that to my side of the hook shank here. And we're going to use the bend of that hook, the curvature of that hook, to give the fly kind of its hunched, hunched back appearance. For the tail, we're going to use some wood duck. Grab a few fibers here, about 10 fibers. I have to use a little more because this is a larger fly. And tie those in to form a short, sparse tail. Wind forward, I'll wind just, I'll cover those just the back of the lead. And then wrap. That gives a nice smooth transition. We'll be able to dub a slender smooth body now because we have a slender smooth underbody. Whatever you do to the underbody of the fly is reflected in what you do afterwards. So if you've got a lumpy, ugly underbody, when you dub that body, you're going to have a lumpy, ugly overbody too. So just keep them smooth and your flies will come out perfect every time. The HBI dubbing blend is a mix of rusty brown, olive, orange, and it really does come to life in the water. It's all, it's all rabbit fur easy to dub and easy to get get a hold of in a wide variety of colors. I do some flashy synthetic HBI blends but I always go back to the original. It seems to work the best. And I want a very smooth tapered body on this fly. So you see I've spun the dubbing on nice and tight. Start right at the base of the tail. Slender, slender. That's really key. You want a slim abdomen and a bulky thorax on this fly. If you get to right about the halfway point of the hook shank, there's your lead wire. The abdomen's nice and smoothly tapered and slender. Again, really keep the fly as slender as you can. Rib forward. Notice I rib fairly tightly because the thread doesn't have as much presence as the, as the metal wire would, copper or gold but it gives a nice subtle segmentation, a little orange barring on the fly. Really adds to the, 
to the look of the fly. And again, when the fly is wet, it really gets translucent and glows, looks just like a little pale morning dun nymph. I'm going to trim a sliver of turkey tail for the wing case. This is a pretty low grade turkey tail I brought along, but we'll make it work. Just trim the tip square like so and tie it in. But when you tie in a piece of turkey or any other type of feather, for that matter, for a wing case, there's two sides to every feather. There's the what I call the dull side, which has got this kind of matte sheen to it. And then there's the nice, richly colored side of the feather. That's the, the side that the bird holds out too. So we'll tie it with the dull side up, and then when we pull it forward, it'll come forward with that nice, rich, natural color on it. You need to dub a little heavier thorax. Like I said, we want a slim body and a slim abdomen and a thick thorax on this fly. So we use a little bit more dubbing. Just find a nice plump little mayfly thorax there, just like so. Now our legs. And for the legs, we're going to go right back to the wood duck feather. And again, I'm tying a size 10 here, so it's a little bigger than I normally tie this fly, but you'll still want to use about 20 fibers of wood duck. And I just pull off a panel of the fibers like so, and split them in my fingers so that I can hold two V's like so and I just roll my thumb forward to pinch down on those and hold them. I just come forward to the hook shank right alongside the abdomen. Now I'm just going to change hands. I'm going to go with my left thumb and forefinger. Now the leg fibers are gripped right along either side of the thorax. All I have to do is tie them in forward with a couple tight turns of thread. Boom. There's your wings. Perfect length on both sides, tied in at the same time, quick and easy. Trim off the excess. Pull the wing case forward. Do that with light pressure. Don't just yank the thing forward. Just do it with light pressure. Allow it to spread out over the top of the thorax so that we get nice coverage there. Tie it down with a few tight turns of thread. We've just about finished up our hunchback and frequents or HBI nymph. A lot of people call it a hunchback PMD, which is the bug it's meant to imitate. You fish spring creeks or western rivers that have PMD hatches, this fly should be in your box. Very effective. And all the tools and materials that I used to tie them are available at renoflyshop.com. Thanks very much for stopping by.